everyone, Brady from Texture Labs here back in Adobe After Effects, and we're gonna be creating some animated bleeding ink reveal effects. Very, very cool effect. I think it works particularly well for generating pieces that you can use in bigger, complex animations. So what we're gonna do is build out this one ink reveal word, and I think it should make a nice example to convey a lot of the basic principles at work. Now on the technical side, it's a pretty straightforward setup. These are all of the effects used in this entire setup right here in this composition, but conceptually, it's a little bit of a brain teaser, particularly because of this effect that pretty much drives the whole thing, CC time blend effects, otherwise known as the secret effect of After Effects. I got a lot more in depth in this tutorial if you wanna get a more full comprehensive idea of how this effect works, but let's run through just the essential key points you need to know about CC time blend effects. Number one, CC time blend effects, an effect that has not been in the effects menu since about 20 2015, but you can still use it even in current versions of After Effects. You just need to kind of trick the program into applying it by applying it as a preset. So I'm going to link to the Psycore FX website below where you can download the FFX preset. You drop that into your presets folder, restart After Effects, and it'll show up as a preset in After Effects. Number two, anytime you use this effect, you need to use two instances of it. The one that gets applied first is set to paste, and the one that gets applied second is set to copy. A little bit counterintuitive, rather than copy paste, it's paste copy. Then in between those effects, you can apply any other effects, and what you get is basically an echo, but with each echo, you get the in-between effects applied over and over and over again. You can kind of think of it as a feedback loop. So with each successive frame, you get more and more and more of these effects. Then number three, and this is probably why time blend effects is not immediately available in After Effects anymore. It uses your disk cache to copy and paste and create these echoes and create this effect. And long story short, for the effect to work, every frame has to be rendered in chronological order. So in current versions of After Effects, you'll need to go into your memory and performance preferences and turn off multi-frame rendering. We need just one frame at a time. And number four, kind of a related point, every time you preview this effect or render it out, you need to go back to the first frame and purge all memory and disk cache and then start your render. So you're starting with no frames in your cache. I went ahead and set up a keyboard shortcut to purge all memory and disk cache. I'm using Shift X. If you're gonna experiment with this effect, I suggest you do the same. Okay, I hate that I have to go through that whole disclaimer just to use this effect, but it's still probably my favorite effect in the program, so I think it's worth it. Let's get started. Now, the way this project works is based on a few interconnected pieces, so I think it'd be good if we start by looking at kind of a simplified version of the whole project to show how the pieces fit together and kind of interact with one another. So on the bottom here, I have a white solid and I'm using the stroke effect just to draw this line. And you can kind of think of this as the actual ink that touches the paper, the initial source. And then we have a handful of adjustment layers up here and they each have just one effect. So we have four displacement map effects and they're sandwiched between CC time blend effects on the bottom and CC time blend effects on the top. So let's turn off these CC time blend effects layers for the moment. And the displacement map effects are pretty simple. They all use the same reference displacement map layer, which is this layer, a solid with some fractal noise. So displacement based on this fractal noise. And the only difference between these four displacement map effects is that they're all pointed in different directions. So we have one that displaces things upwards, one that displaces things downwards, one to the left, and one to the right. And they're all set to darken. So they're all pointed in different directions and they're all set to darken. So when they're all combined, they're basically just going to expand things. Then when we include the time blend effects layers, we've got copy on top, paste on bottom, and the paste effect is also set to darken. And now the displacement effect is gonna get looped over and over and over again, and we get a little bit more of this chaotic expansion on every frame. And the fact that these are all set to darken means that we get more and more dark ink and the displacement is just pushing things further with each frame. 
but how do we get it to stop? How do we control what kind of shape this fills in to be rather than just this even expansion everywhere? Well, right now the displacement map reference layer is just fractal noise all over. It can displace things all over the place. But what we can do is customize this displacement reference layer. So for example, let's add a mask, which should mean that we'll only get displacement in this area. And I'll feather this out to create a little bit of a fall off. Then let's go back to the start, clear the disk cache and see how this looks. So now we're only getting the effect where we have an active displacement map and things are going to slow down as they approach the edge of that mask. And outside of this area, we basically have no displacement, so it really has no effect. So these are really the primary forces at work. We've basically got the source, which can be just some small initial amount of ink. Then we've got our displacement map reference, and that's gonna determine where the ink can bleed. And then we've got this stack of effects, which kind of activate the whole thing. I should mention, I'm also gonna include one more adjustment layer in here with a median effect on it. And that's just a noise reduction effect that'll clean up those little crunchy pieces. And the source of the ink, by the way, doesn't have to be a line. It can be just a couple little blobs of ink, just something to get the effect started. And the boundaries of the displacement map can be something more sophisticated than a mask. We can build out a custom displacement map and really tell the ink to flow into some particular shape. Okay, well, let's see if we can quickly build this effect from scratch to create a piece of typography. So I'm gonna create a new composition. This is gonna be 4K resolution, 24 frames per second. And I'm gonna get started with a white solid in here. And then I also want a piece of typography. And this text is gonna represent what the filled in ink shape will be. So for now, I'm gonna leave it turned on as a reference, but I'm gonna be selecting the white solid and drawing some mask lines on this white solid layer. And these are basically gonna be the strokes of where the pen tip is gonna to touch the paper. I'm gonna apply the stroke effect to that, make it apply to all masks and make it black. And maybe we'll bring the brush size up to three. And then let's animate the stroke so it starts with the end at zero and then maybe out at frame 60 or 70, it'll go up to 100%. So pretty straightforward, that's gonna be our brush stroke and that's sort of the source of the ink. Okay, now let's make the custom displacement map layer. And what I'm gonna do is just use this text layer and kind of treat this to be a displacement map. You can always make a super custom displacement map in a pre-comp or something. The idea is just that you're gonna want fractal noise wherever you want the ink to spread. And I'm gonna want the ink to fill in these letter shapes, but I do want it to kind of slow down as it approaches the edges. So before applying any fractal noise, let's just get the shape right. I'm gonna use a fast box blur and bring it up to about 20, just so it fades out here and the displacement will get weaker toward the edges. But the blur is also expanding the shape and I don't want ink continuing to bleed all the way out here. So I'm gonna use the set matte effect and kind of reapply those edges. That way the ink will kind of slow down here and then stop when it hits the edges. And then let's add another fast box blur and set it just to two, just to make these edges a little bit more organic, not too sharp. And then let's go ahead and give it the fractal noise effect to give us all that chaos and create the displacement. And this just comes from experimenting, but I found it creates a nice inky displacement if I bring the complexity up to 10 and bring the sub influence up to about 90%. It's just a noisier, more detailed fractal noise. And I'm also gonna change the blending mode of the fractal noise to none. And that just does a better job compositing when it comes to these little semi-transparent parts. So technically that should do it. This noisy shape should spread the ink through the letters, but I also want it to spill off the edges just a little bit here and there. So I want a little bit of fractal noise all over in the background. So first what I'm gonna do is just fill in the entire background using the solid composite effect and I'm gonna set the color to 50% gray. And in a displacement map, 50% gray is the same as transparent. It basically creates zero displacement, so it's kind of a neutral field. But I'm gonna add one more fractal noise, and I'll keep everything at default here, except I'm gonna bring the opacity, this effect, way down and make it very faint, so we'll go down to 8% opacity. Okay, this is the displacement reference layer. You can kind of imagine how this will work. We're gonna get a nice strong displacement where we have all this noise and the ink can spread very quickly. Then as it gets toward these gray areas, it slows down and we can get just a little bit of displacement out here. Okay, let's set up the adjustment layers. 
So first we'll create the displacement map effect layers, and then we'll kind of sandwich them between CC time blend effects. So new adjustment layer, I'm going to call this one displacement up, and I'm going to apply the displacement map effect. And this effect, I'm going to point it at the displacement reference layer using effects and masks and set the horizontal displacement to zero and the vertical at 10. So this one will just displace up. Now, important, I also need to set the blending mode of this adjustment layer to darken so that it can only ever create darker and darker values. Then let's make three copies of this adjustment layer. And so we're going to have displacement up, down, right, and left. And then I'm going to change the values in each of these layers. So down is going to be zero and negative 10. Right is going to be horizontal value of 10 and vertical of zero. And left is going to be negative 10 and zero. Okay, so far that looks like this. It's just the same tiny bit of displacement on every frame. So we need to keep reapplying the displacement with CC time blend effects. I'm going to put an adjustment layer on top of everything and I'll call this time blend effects copy. And I need to apply the time blend effects effect on here. So I'm going to go into my presets panel and assuming I've put that preset locally in my presets folder, I can find CC time blend effects and apply that to this layer. And for this effect, I want it just at its default settings, just like this set to copy, but we do need another instance of time blend effects. So I'm going to duplicate this adjustment layer and this one's going to be time blend effects paste. And the effect is also going to get set to paste. And this one goes below the displacement map layers. Then just like the displacement map effects, we only want this effect to make things darker and darker. So I'm going to change the transfer mode of the effect to also be set to darken. Accumulation is basically how much the effect can build up as it goes. And we want a pretty strong effect. So I'm going to take that up to 95%. Okay, let's take a look at how that is working. And it's getting close. We just need to deal with these little rogue crunchy pixels. And what's happening here is that there are inevitably going to be some pixels in the fractal noise that happen to be 50% gray, meaning they get no displacement and the ink just can't get there and they stay white. But we can fix this up by adding just that one more adjustment layer in here. I'm going to call this one median and apply the median effect and just set this to a radius of one. Median is just a noise reduction effect and it works perfect for cleaning up just really sharp corners or single bright pixels like this. All right, well, that is looking cool. Now, because CC time blend effects is such a finicky effect with all the frame caching and everything, rather than trying to use this composition as a pre-comp in a larger scale project, I'd rather just render this out without being too exact about the timing and then use those pre-renders with some time remapping and maybe add some colorize effects. That's what I did for the intro of this video. I just rendered out a bunch of individual pieces and then it was a lot more fun pushing those little video elements around and not having to worry about CC time blend effects going haywire every other frame. All right, well, I hope this video has at least made you want to try pushing this effect around. The more you can think through how each of these pieces work, the better you can kind of harness the effect and create all kinds of different stuff. All right, well, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.